this is useful. All right, I'm recording now just in case we get some good information. <laughs> My point is, guys, is wait for the area that is the safest. Like I said, I miss trades all the time. But when I do trade, I'm a lot more accurate than a lot of traders because I'm waiting for these desired entries. So I'm willing to scale from here up until here, right? Because this is where, you know, this is where I feel like most of the volume is. If a pumper does come in, I'm not going to get screwed because dude, if you short right here and you know, a certain bearded magician comes in and he pushes it to 680, bro, you're going to be catching up and stopping out where I'm starting to get in. That makes sense. So things like that. Um, do you short $1? I do not. Uh, uh, GSE, I don't like $1 because, uh, I mean, we could just pull it up. I, I didn't even pull up Rito today. Um, there's just a lot of games usually with these and compliance things and, you know, NASDAQ, and they try to keep it over one. Again, play patterns more than bias, but I typically have a sour taste in my mouth when it comes to $1 stocks just because I know how many games are behind it. And honestly, bro, honestly, I always get fucked up when I'm hitting up the broker, Chris at Cobra, or I'm hitting the short locate because I don't usually do them. You have to go like five times the normal amount of shares that you usually reserve because there's no fucking range, dude. So if I'm reserving 3,000 from Chris on a normal stock or something and I get 3,000 free on this, it's like, dude, I gotta get like 9,000. Like, and then I'm just fucked up. So like, it's just, it's, you know, what I mean? It's like, it doesn't even make sense, right? Like it, I don't know. I just hate, I hate the, the fact that these usually don't have meat. And then I'm like, dude, are they going to pull games and try to stay over one? I don't like high maintenance, man. I, I'll just say it like that. I really don't like high maintenance, bro. And I don't like figuring out how many shares I need for an 80 cent stock, trying to get a move to like maybe 105. <laughs> like, bro, my brain is just sometimes a little too depleted for that shit. Um, give me the DPWs all day, man. Give, yeah, exactly. St uh, stands the same, man. Me the same, no stocks under a dollar. Just, it's not the niche, dude. It's not the niche. It just reminds me like OTCs. And I was never an OTC player. Never, dude. I never messed with OTCs, man. It was just not something I was really familiar with, to be honest. So give me the DPWs all day, man. If this would have bounced, dude, after this, I didn't catch this because I didn't get a bounce, but dude, had this bounced to like 220 to scale up to 235 where resistance was, I would have been all over this. But look at this thing. I'm not, I'm not going to chase this down. I'm just on a Friday, on a day where people are like, dude, this is not the day to chase something down, right? Like anything can happen, man. We're going into a three-day weekend. It's slow as shit, dude. But remember what I just said, guys, when it comes to volume. Take a look at this. For all my new guys, what did I say? Most of the volume on a lot of these pennies or a lot of these small caps, it's in the morning. And then if you see a fader like this, look at, I mean, dude, literally draw a trend line, man. Let's like, how, how, how much more can I break this down for you guys? Dude, this thing is headed straight to hell. There's no demand. This is why it faded all day. And there's a lot less chance for a zombie with something like this. While anything can zombie, you need to pay attention. Look at this, dude. Look at it. It's just fade, 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 fade. Not even a test midday. Not even like a nice push to test some of these candles. And this thing is just still continuing lower. This will probably go um, lower if this can't catch a bid or if volume doesn't come in. I mean, we are dangerously low levels of volume, but you can't short it here because what, what, what meat is on the boat? There's no meat on the bone. What are you, what are you trying to get? Look at this. What are, you, what are you trying to make, bro? 10 cents at the risk that this does come back? That's not solid risk reward. Again, this is like 15, 20% of the chart, dude. Draw a line from the from where the move started, if you're brand new, draw a line where the move started to um, the top of the pre-market. And that's, all, I mean, here, fuck, what's that, what's that thing again? It's um, uh, Fibonacci, where is it? Fibonacci retracements, boom. This is very useful for things like this when you're new. I'm not trying to show you guys an indicator. I'm just trying to say, and just, you know, obviously flip this in your mind from 0% to 100 or 100 to zero. Dude, like that's, that's, not even 20, that's not even 25% of the chart, man. What are you trying to make on that, dude? You can't scale this shit. You can't chase this shit. Like, even if you got it, that'd be 100% of the move give back. Don't play shit like that, dude. No. Keep it simple, man. Play meat on the bone. I may have to shut my dog up and throw him in a back room. Um, 
40% of the float was stuck in the first three minute candle, unlikely to break on a bounce on DPW. Yeah. Uh, the bear played it as an all day fit. Yeah, dude, he loves these, man. He's got some sick criteria and I, fuck man. I probably would have, if I would have gotten an entry, but man, by the time I was just, dude, I was like, I was in big caps. I was in like beyond meat and stuff this morning. I just, I, there was no balance, man. By the time I actually really looked at this, I was like, nah, I missed it. And you know what? It's okay to say that guys. It's okay to say, dude, I missed it, bro. It's okay. Just get out of this big dick game. Who's got the biggest dick. Who's got the biggest ego. I saw a guy on Twitter make $500,000 today. Oh my God. Now I got to force some money. Who gives a shit, dude? Who gives? Yeah. Um, Omer. Yeah. It's just, it's just a really cool way. The Fibonacci retracements. It's just a really cool way to look. I'm not a Fibonacci fan, man. I'm not. It is a cool way to see though, what percentage of where the chart is though, as related to meat on the bone, if anything, dude, just, just put it on your chart to correlate. Oh, that's a hundred percent of the move. If it's down here, like, um, you know, I mean, we, we're just, we're eyeballing this, but you know, this is about, you know, Dude, I'm saying like, just eyeball it, man. 50% of the move. If it's under there and there's, and there's a lot of meat on the bone, right? Like you can even use these for death line plays. If the 50% level matches with a death line level and there's a ton of meat to come down still, dude, half the longs are stuck. Half the longs are stuck. So there are certain identifiers that can really help you out. I don't think you need these on your charts, man. You really can't eyeball this once you get a hang of it, but it is something. If you're new and you're like, dude, I really can't read a chart yet, you know? Um, all right, let's go back for a second. When you check the short float on Finviz, what percent would you say is valid? Oh, dude, uh, any, like, it's crazy, man. Because, so let's, let's, actually, let's actually look at one. Um, Finviz, right? So let's, let's go. You get bombarded by 10,000 ads. But look at this. Shit. The, the, the spy going down, man. I wouldn't be long in this shit right now. I'm just telling you. I'm riding trend. Um, uh, what, get, somebody give me a stop. What, VVPR or something like that? Okay. Short float. Very small on VVPR. I, if the criteria and the lines match up and my process lines up, I'm, I'm short all day on something like this, right? But it is a smaller float. Now, if I see 10%, I'm cautious, dude. And let me tell you something. When it comes to short float, guys, short float percentage, any percentage above 10 cents, I get even more cautious. If I see this at 15, I'm really cautious. If I see this at 20, I'm not touching it. I see this at freaking 40%, bro. I wouldn't let my worst enemy short this fucker. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, you got to really pay attention to short float. Percentage, percentage. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even tell my worst enemy to short a 40 percenter, man. That's how scared of those I am, man. I'm telling you the biggest squeezes in the world. <laughs> what happens when everybody, you see what I'm saying? Um, take a look at this page. It's like Finwiz without the, oh dude, I'll check that out later. Awesome, man. I, I, I'll check that out. Definitely. Great, great resource for anybody who's interested. Uh, Cloud just put a really cool resource. I, apparently it's like Finviz without all those damn ads. It's like, Dude, I go to Finviz and I'm like, hot horny milfs in my area. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> Where? <laughs> they lie to you every time, bro. All right, let's get back to it before I turn this into a really degenerate webinar. But um, as, a, as beginning to learn, $10 a day is the goal. Fuck yeah, dude. If, I'm telling you right now, man, when you're first starting, dude, it ain't about money. You back test, you learn, you, you, you trade for you trade to learn the industry. You don't trade for money. When a lot of guys hit me up and they're like, Hey Tosh, you know, I got a $2,000 account, man. I am, I'm really stressed out. Like, I don't know if I make, you know, a hundred dollars a day. I don't know if I make $30 a day, stuff like that. I'm like, bro, honestly, stop thinking about money, man. I said, why don't you just get good at this craft that you have introduced your world to, and you're probably got bit by the trading bug and you're probably going to be in this for the next 10, 20 years, man. So Dude, fuck the $2,000 account right now. Invest it in education, whether that's with us, whether it's with someone else. I, I hope it's us because I think we're definitely the best out there. But let me tell you guys, it is not about making money when you first start. If, 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 if even in the first five months you're trading, man, get understand this game, man. If you want to make a lot of money 
in, we always use the, you know, we always use the example of real estate, right? If you want to make a lot of money in real estate, man, do you really think your first property, which is probably a $150,000 condo, two bedroom in Texas or Arizona or someplace where you can get your feet wet in real estate, you really think that you're going to try to make a ton of money on that in the first year? No, dude, you're going to get your process. You're going to get your feet wet, man. You're going to understand the industry. You're going to learn lessons through that. Even if you broke even on the property, do you know how much you're going to learn about screening tenants, getting a renter in there, what that entails, maybe getting a property management company, um, dealing with, you know, fixer uppers and, and fixing issues. It's like with any industry comes a level of dude, put your ego aside and say, look, I'm a minnow in a, in a big lake, or I'm a guppy in a sea of sharks. And to one day be a shark, which I hope all of you become and you I promise you a lot of you will if you fucking stick to it and study every day, but you got to at least know you're the kid in the sandbox right now, man. And, it, and it's not about making money. It's about networking. It's about understanding. It's about, it's about learning. And then it's about sharpening the tool. And then it's really about getting better. And it's funny, man, because, you know, Bao's been saying it for so long, but when you get good, it's you really, I, I know we all think about the money and like, dude, Alex is up 44,000 this week, right? Like that's phenomenal. Dude, he's not thinking about that right now. He's thinking about how can I trade better? How can I be a better me? How can I trade better today, tomorrow? How can I be better than I was yesterday? It is about the art at this point. It is not about, okay, if I don't hit $2,000 a day, I'm a loser. It ain't about that shit, dude. Alex may take a $2,000 loss on Monday and say, dude, it was the best trade he ever made because had he held that position, maybe he would have lost 200 grand. You know, who knows, dude, you, who knows? Sometimes a good trade is actually taking the L. Now I'm getting passionate. All right, um, uh, where are we? Bloody Mary, do, 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 do. why don't any of the gurus or mods on here trade OTC? Dude, OTCs are dead. Show me OTCs, man, they're fucking dead. Um, Woody um, at Woody Tab. And Bao are the masters. Uh, Bao started an OTC, so I'm surprised. Apparently, OTC has been, I mean, I don't even know. I haven't even paid attention in the last month, man. I don't pay attention to these whatsoever. I never did. Uh, if they are kind of hot right now, send me some tickers, man. I have no idea. But I am not an OTC guy. Never will, unless it was the only thing trading on the market. And when it comes to, um, so, so like just, just for some backstory, GSE, is Bao was the master of OTCs, dude, to the point of like, Literally, dude, if you think he's good now, man, it, it, it would be like watching Superman fight humans, dude. I'm not even fucking kidding you, dude. And the point is in OTCs, when the Wolf of Wall Street came out, man, they fucking died, dude. I'm not bullshitting you. Th th that movie scared everybody. They put regulations on them. They closed them up. Dude, OTCs are dead because the Wolf of Wall Street. Martin Scorsese put the freaking the, 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 the garlic peelers on the vampire dude i'm telling you right now he destroyed otcs and and bow talks about it all the time man and it's just look you can you can cry about it the rest of your of your life if you were an otc player you know bow was a huge otc player he could cry about it or he could transition into nasdaq make this his full-time um you know focus and then say look if otcs ever come back he's gonna kill it and if they don't he does the best he can in NASDAQ, just like we all do. So again, man, in life, there are two mindsets. You can either be a victim or you can adapt. And I see a lot of guys, man, get really good at, at a long setup because it's a long market and then it becomes a short market and they want to jump off a bridge. Bro, it's not you. you it's, the market's changing. Not everything works 24%, uh, 20, you know, 24 seven. It doesn't work all the time. You have to adapt. So I like to say all the time, and I kind of made this quote a little bit famous, but I don't change my process ever. I change my patience because my patience is going, because here's, here's an example. If every stock in the market guys right now for small caps for the next month, look like DPW, shorts can get away with anything, dude. You could, you could, if every chart looked like this, you could short on any push under VWAP and literally close your eyes and make money. Then guess what? There are the stocks for weeks where everything squeezes right back at zombie hour to all time highs, keeps going, pumpers get in it, and you have KCACs every single day. Every single day. They, they, there are those markets. So guess what? Instead of not having to be super patient on a stock like DPW, just get your confirmed short bounces and write it down. 
I will have to wait for something to really top out and be a day two or day three or a death candle on the first day. You got to wait. You just have to, my process never changes, man. It's just patience. I'm waiting for the certain confirms. Uh, let's go. Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? Um, install ad blocker. Yeah, I should. Someone shared it last week and it was great. Trade for process. Yeah, dude, trade well, money comes. Process for small gains. Dude, small gains add up, bro. I, I, man, stop going for the big wins every day, guys. I'm telling you, man, base hits will be a grand slam at the end of the week. Um, two-way trader is the best tab you can add. Hey, I like two-way, man. He's a really good dude. Nellen's a, Nellen's a hungry individual, man. I'm telling you, that, that, dude is, that dude is hungry to be good, man. Uh, my first property was 30K, learned so much. Exactly, Kevin, that's the whole thing, man. I bet you didn't go into it thinking, dude, I'm gonna get rich off this first property. You probably went in thinking, I'm gonna get my feet wet, I'm gonna learn process, then I can leverage that 30K into something bigger, and that's trading. Um, they say it takes 10K hours to get good at something. Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell, I think it was. Hold on. Um, outliers by, yep, Malcolm Gladwell. Guys, for any of you, Please, please, please read this book over this weekend, dude. Get the audio book, bro. Take a fucking bath. Do what you got to do. Um, let me go back to it. Guys, this is the book. If you haven't read this, read this book. Read this. This is the science of mastery. This is the science of mastery. In any field, in anything you do, in anything you partake in life, this will tell you how, what it takes to be a master in your field. 10 thousand hours with endless examples and guess what dude if you haven't read it read it <laughs> Man, i feel like i feel like me bowing out at bow's probably at like forty thousand hours i feel like i'm at like probably like fifteen thousand hours bow's actually probably at like ninety thousand, dude then there comes to a point where you're like dude too many hours now i got all these bad habits in <laughs> great you're like dude i spent the first seven thousand hours with bad fucking habits man oh shit um, Bao does not teach 95% of what he knows. He is beyond human. Oh, Bao. Yeah, yeah, dude. I'm telling you, he is beyond human. Um, another amazing book is Mastery by Robert Greene. Have not heard of that one, dude. I'll, here, I'll tell you what. I'll screenshot that for later, brother. Cool. Thanks for the recommend. I'll have to check that out. I, uh, I listen to a lot of audiobooks. I love them, man. When I'm driving, dude, that's, that's the other thing, man. Everything in life is growth. Or, that's a great one, dude. That's a phenomenal book. Um, if you guys, you know, want to learn anything in life, dude, how are you spending your time? Are you listening to, you know, fucking, you know, I don't know, dude, you know, music while you're driving in three hour drives. Are you listening to trading books? Are you listening to outliers? Are you listening to, um, th Oh dude, that is one of the best books I've ever read in my entire life. That's my top five, Darren Hardy. The Compound Effect. This is top five of all time best books ever written in the English language, dude. This is, this, is, this, is, this is one of the best books you could ever read. In fact, this is way better than Outliers. I'm telling you right now, read this book. Read this book. Outliers will tell you what mastery is and how to acquire it. This book will tell you all the intricacies of how to get to mastery. Um, yep. Uh, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Wonderful. Compound Effect is great. Think and Grow Rich. Um, Atomic Habits is great. I have that. Dude, are you guys wasting your time? Or are you using your time to grow, man? Trading, life, learning. You know, if you're on a six hour drive up to Northern California or something like that, man, are you going to the beach one day? Bro, put an audiobook on, man. CEOs on average listen to 55 audiobooks or read uh, 55 books a day. I I'm sorry. I'm sorry. A year annually. <laughs> Dr. Tosh. <laughs> Cashflow Quadrant, I didn't like as much as Rich Dad, Poor Dad, but it's still good. I own it. That's okay. I like Robert Kiyosaki a lot. He's really about um, financial literacy and just basically, you know, what is the difference between an investor and somebody who follows the norm of like general education, get a job, work your balls off, and then hopefully retire on savings, which will destroy you destroy you, destroy you over time through inflation. And if you're not leveraging your money, it's dead money. Um, let's see, does MIC have a channel that lists out, but man, we should now nah, just go to after hours. Um, guys, I'll make this like a, <laughs> like a Friday challenge. I want everybody to go to after I'm, I'm starting the challenge, man. Friday challenge post favorite 
book in any field. I'll give you, I'll give you guys, I'll give you guys one that, um, that wasn't said today. Here's mine. Mine today is the, oops, the richest man in Babylon. Top five, baby. That's my, that's my book recommendation for today. You guys start too, man. I'm telling you, you guys got to read this, man. You want to learn how to, how to make wealth in this life. The richest man in Babylon. That'll do it. Where are we at though? <laughs> you didn't like it or you did, Midtown? You're a real estate guy. You understand that. Oh, you like it. Okay. Yeah. I was like, dude, you're in real estate, man. There's no way you don't like that one. <laughs> Dude, that's literally the richest man in Babylon is like going back to the fundamentals of wealth, dude, like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Dude, nothing has changed in wealth, man. Nothing on how to acquire has changed in like a thousand fucking years, dude. Get people, leverage debt and get people to pay for your shit. We should do, we should do like financial literacy webinars, dude. <laughs> Yeah, become the bank, man, or or get raped by the bank for the rest of your life in the monetary system. It's just it's just the more we print money, dude, the more it's going on a downhill slope. All right, guys, who has any more questions about trading though? <laughs> With this, this is technically a trading, you know, webinar. <laughs> dude, we've been an ironing club, we've been an investing club, we're a trading club. <laughs> Fucking, we, we just be, hey, we're getting it, man. Can you explain how you look at scaling the wicks on the inner versus outer lines quickly? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, let, well, this isn't really an example. What was that one stock, AMPC? Yeah, so what I do, brother, is if I have a couple lines, and sometimes I will do it right before the top because this is like a slope on the way to the top. So we'll just say it right here. It's more of the base of the candles on the closer line and then on the outer line that I'm looking to scale, I will go to the top of the wick. So I'm kind of doing like, and you could just, you, you could use those three because they're so close together, but I will use the base of the candles and then the top of the wicks for the outer line. That's how I scale. That's my, that's my scale level usually. Uh, duh, duh, duh. Okay, where are we at? Where are we at? Um, just keep in talking to the market. Dude, I, I can't talk that long. <laughs> Zig, uh, Zig Ziglar is great. Um, that is where I got through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard of him. I don't know much about him, but I have heard some wonderful things. Blow up small account. What is the best way to restart in, in the correct way? Um, if you blow up a small account, guys, no matter how much money, it, it literally comes back to stop trying to make money. It comes back to back testing. It comes back to, you know, you got to get green. You got to understand just on chart patterns what you're doing. Because here's the thing that a lot of small accounts do is like I said, they are trying to just go back and make money. Okay, I blew up a $2,000 account. Fuck, I'm going to refund it and try to make some money and turn it in 10000 No, dude, no, 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 no. Learn the patterns, learn the art, learn the process, learn the language. You've got to learn why you blew up that small account or why, you know, he did or she did. It, it, it comes back to an art form, man. Just the little account guys that blow up an account and get right back in, get back in with paper trading, man. Don't try to make money tomorrow. It's not about this rush, dude. I don't know why everybody wants, you know why everybody wants to rush? I mean, I get it. I don't understand it, but I get it. You see Alex or Bao or you see guys on Twitter and you see how easy they quote unquote make it look, but you guys didn't see the years where Bao put, took out a mortgage on his house to trade because he ran into some trouble in the beginning or Alex blew up his first account, sold the rims off his BMW to fund an account and then grew it and then backslid, then grew it, then backslid a little bit and then really grew it. You guys didn't see the sleepless. The, the, look, man, successful people simply, whatever field it is, the success looks easy because you didn't see the years of unsuccessful, right? So, or for some people like months, you know, there's a lot of people that get it a lot quicker than usual. And there's a lot of people that stumble for a while until they get it. Then they're like, dude, he's an overnight success. Nobody's a fucking overnight success, dude. So if you blew up a little account, just get back to basics, but don't try to make, don't try to turn that account into double and I got to make my money back. Just learn the game, man. Learn the game, study up, back test, back test, back test. Have, uh, would you have played PLM and how? Let's take a look. Uh, well, oh shit. 
Uh, wow, that's what I'm talking about, guys. Did I not? Yeah, this is what I'm talking about, man. This is usually indicative of a fat reversal downward. I would, I don't even know what this is. What is this? Polymet mine, mining? Oh, I don't like mining. I don't usually like mining. It's more like commodity type stuff. But um, something like this, man, just on a chart pattern sense, if I liked the criteria on something like this, bro, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for pops to scale into this. And I usually go up to, um, uh, there we go. I usually go up to when there's a huge wick like this, because this isn't a death candle, I would scale a whole death candle, but usually stuff moves, I go up to about half. So I probably would have tried to start scaling this as best I could. That's how I usually do it. Um, because stuff moves are a little bit different than death candles, uh, but they are kind of death candles in the way that they operate. So yeah. Do you check if a stock pops 100% or 300%? Is there, mini is there a minimum name uh, for it to pump? Um, I like the more, you know, the more extended, the better, man. I like 60% at least. Um, when it comes to, you know, 300% and stuff, if something's up 300% and 400%, that's just more meat on the bone. So when my confirm comes, I'm excited as hell, man. A death candle on a 300% may be so much more powerful than something on a 60%. Because now, dude, think about how many percentage of people are stuck. Would you, yeah, so I did that. Do you think Tesla, oh, what's Tesla doing? <laughs> uh, it very much could, man. It's due for a dead cat bounce, but I think uh, Tesla and Apple are going to see a little bit more downside for the coming week. I hope, man. I mean, I'm more so hoping because I would love to set up some swings for the long haul, but we need to see some serious retracements on these because it's like Joe said, man, it's since they split, I think, God, where was the split again? Now they're finally like at the equilibrium of where they split and had the gain. So, you know, things like that or, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Apple was, oh God, I can't remember, but it was, I think it's under the split level or it touched it today. But if this gets to a hundred, I might be interested for a long time swing. Um, but again, you know, I'm not racing for it. You gotta, you gotta wait. You gotta wait for your desired entries. Apple hits a hundred. I throw a long-term swing or it doesn't and I pass. Fuck it. Advice on overthinking when trading, like knowing too much. That is true. Okay. So if you are having trouble pulling the trigger, if you are having any trouble when it comes to overthinking or gun shy, number one, guys, number one, you have not narrowed down your focus to one thing. You are still spread out. You are still trying to nail too much. You are still trying to do too many strategies. If you can commit to one strategy and good as, get as good as you can at it by, by really, really limiting your focus to one thing and getting so linear on how much you want to accomplish on that one thing and mastery of that, then um, that's how you're going to get over that. But overthinking is you're just trying to do too much. Yeah, the compound effect. There you go. Um, doo -doo -doo. Suggestions on ways to combat revenge trading for a friend, of course. God, God. <laughs> well, when it, like I said, man, when it comes to revenge trading, the problem with revenge trading is it's usually very, very much combined with counter trend trading. Counter trend, guys, counter trend, counter trend, counter trend. Because here's the thing, man. If you are a long trader and you took a loss on this DPW, and then you kept adding and you tried to squeeze this motherfucker, dude. You are fo not following trend. So the thing that I will say, Stephen, for your friend, of course, <laughs> or maybe your grandma or whoever's doing it, not you, um, just remember, guys, that revenge trading is very much guessing, playing your bias, playing what you think, flipping coins, fighting trend, not just waiting for the confirms. So just because you lost, man, does not mean the market cares. It doesn't mean like, hey, get back in. Let's make it back. Do the market don't give a shit. It's just you're going to fight yourself in that moment, right? You just got to play the chart, man. So revenge trading has a massive direct correlation to fighting trend. Nico is a wonderful example, man. Nico, a dear friend of ours, um, eight years it took him, eight years. And now he's a, he's a phenom, dude. He's a fucking phenom. Moderators have an indicator that indicates the, <laughs> the indicated to an indication showing the indication of making money. Hell yeah. Ron, tell that. Is there any reason we don't have a separate channel for long traders just like our main? Yes, there very much is. Because Bao, the way Bao and Alex talk, or the, well, the way we all talk, but the way Bao and Alex talk 
is very much specifically designed for both sides. When he is short something, he doesn't want you guys long. And when he's looking along something, he wants the shorts to be on their toes. Even the watch list that Alex talks about in the morning is very much tailored to, it is very much tailored to um, talking to both sides indirectly and directly. So guys, if all the short mods and mentors are like, dude, I'm not fucking touching this stock. What do you think that means for long, man? That means that, yeah. And the thing about process and what we do is guys, there's really like one way to trade there's the correct way, which is lines. So if you know lines and you know how to read a chart, you don't need a separate long room and you don't need a separate short room. It's, it's an all-inclusive ecosystem of traders waiting for their confirms. And I'll say it like this. Harry is the complete opposite trader of me. He's looking for FU candles to shorts, which I'm looking for death candles. He's looking for breakouts. I'm looking for breakdowns. I'm looking for death line breaks. He's looking for pre-market breaks. He is looking for VWAP reclaims. I'm looking through slams through VWAPs. We are the exact opposite traders. And guess what? In main trading chat, we respect each other because we both trade the exact same way, the chart and the lines. If he has his opportunity, I wait patiently for mine. If I have the opportunity, he waits patiently for his. Um, it's, like, it's, like, it's like an actor taking the stage in a play, man. It's like, okay, I'm in scene 23B. We're at 22, I'm waiting until the curtain closes and now it's my time to shine. That's what trading in the main room is like, guys. When you understand price action, when you understand lines, the way we teach, I can guarantee you that it's literally just a wait until your scene of the play comes up and then about the best Shakespeare you can and put a hard stop just in case you suck <laughs> and get booed off stage. You can use the swing trading channel. Yep, we have a swing trading room which you guys can connect with these guys. Oh, well, look at you, Tay, buying Tesla. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> she's, she's awesome. Um, where are we at? Webinars. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, yeah, that's, dude, it's, we, it, there's a long and a short for everybody, man. You just got to wait for your time to shine. Um, it also helps longs to see. Yeah, yeah, that's a really, that's the one thing I left out, Trev, is, dude, the reason why, guys, we have a room where they're combined is you need to, to be a long trader, you need to get in the head of a short seller. To be a short seller, you need to know what the longs are thinking. So you need to know the emotion on both ends. Um, knowing when someone is short is, yep, exactly, bro. Here, I'll read you, a, I'll read you guys a tweet. Uh, I put this tweet, actually, I'll post it. Hold on one sec. Let me grab this from my phone. Uh, ooh, Alex, 44,000 on the week. There you go, pal. Um, all right, let me, let me see. I'm going to pull up a tweet for you guys that I wrote years ago. Dude, this thing caught wildfire, man. I didn't expect this thing to get 600 likes. Jesus, 138 freaking retweets. But it's true, man. It's true. So check this. I used to be really, really active on Twitter. But then it just became like a heinous place where people hate each other, man. I really did. Um, I just stay away from all negativity, man. Life is too short. Uh, one sec, one sec. Webinars, where you guys at? Guys, check this out. So I wrote this a couple years ago. I base almost every trade on one thing. Who is stuck? This is the first question. Are shorts in trouble or are longs in trouble? Whoever is stuck will want out of their position. It cannot get any more clear in the sense of supply and demand. I base a lot of my entries on other people's exits. You have to get in the mind of the opposing side. If you are a short seller, you need to know what the long is thinking right there. If you are a long trader like Harry, he needs to know when me, Bow, and Alex and traders like us are on our toes, dude. He needs to know that. Austin needs to know that. So do you. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah. Oh my God, have I already been talking for about an hour? We'll go a little bit longer, guys. I only wanted to do about 30 minutes, but we'll go a little bit longer. Um, <laughs> there you go. Half of, half if not 75% of my entries are on other people's exits. Keep going, you're saving me from FOMO. Yeah, seriously. I'm actually getting FOMO talking about it. Dude, I, <laughs> I'm actually getting FOMO. Now I want to trade something. Shit. What's beyond me doing? Nice, nice. I've, uh, I've got a swing down here somewhere at like 122 something. Um, but uh, that's, a, that's a swing. I'm going to build on that position if it goes lower. Um, 
I want to short Tesla. I wouldn't yet. I wouldn't yet. I, I want this to dead cap bounce to 460. I wouldn't yet. But hey, I mean, do what you, do what you need to do. <laughs> J Meg, JC, um, we're almost done, partner. Any, any more questions, guys, before I kind of wrap this up and come to a close? Does, is anybody new? Uh, please don't be shy. Seriously, there's no dumb questions, man. If, you're, if you've only been trading for a day or a week, there's no dumb questions, guys. Seriously, just um, I, I'm telling you right now, here's your chance to ask questions. Recommendations for a trading PC. I'll show you what I use, but you guys can use whatever the fuck you want. Um, this is what I use. I use this thing. So sick, dude. No tower. I hate those shits, dude. I can't stand normal PCs and towers. I like all-in-one brains with the screen because I'm a nomad and I'm always flipping from location to location. I like to travel. I like to go stay with people. I like to house it. I, dude, I like literally, I'm in and out of properties left and right, man. I can never stay in one place more than 10 minutes. So I like to sometimes just put this in a box, put it in my trunk, and then I'm on the go. This is like my trading laptop practically, but it's 32 inches, put a couple monitors side by side, no tower. It's just, it's literally light as shit. You fit it in the box that it came in very easily, put it in your trunk of your car and then bing, bang, boom. That's what I trade with. Um, but it's really expensive. It's like five G's. So you guys get something cheaper, man. Um, but if you want a, if you guys are brand new and you're like, shit, man, I don't even have a PC, dude. I'm not even kidding you. Like an HP pavilion, dude, like what is it? I seven, 12. These are the specs that you need minimum to start out with. Minimum, minimum, minimum is like I seven, 12 gigabyte, you know, cause you want to hook up monitors to it, man. But if you guys want to go for towers, um, I, I'm not, I'm not a dude. I'm just, I'm not a tech guy. So I love tech, but I don't know the key aspects there. Joe Kelly or Alex posts all his tech, dude. Seriously, like if you go to his Twitter, man, his entire brain and everything he poured into it is you, you can literally just like, you can get the exact specs. So he, we, don't, we don't shy away from any information, guys. If you want to know what I'm trading on, you can see it. If you want to know what, um, what Alex is trading on, he gives you all the, literally all, I think it's right here. Boom, dude, look at that. Thanks, Alex. Uh, guys, literally build Alex's computer, man. I'm telling you right now. I just never, I've never owned a tower in my entire life of 30 years, man. I've just, I've never been a tower fan. I always like, um, I always like the, the, um, the all in ones, but dude, if you're a tower fan, then Alex just gave you the specs on a badass computer, man. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Don't build mine too expensive. <laughs> dude, Alex's fucking energy bill a month is like $500. <laughs> That's why I like all in ones, man. My energy bill on my computer is probably like $30 a month, dude. I swear to God. Oh, shit. Um, this was great. Thanks so much. Hey, thanks, Dan. Thanks for showing up on the Friday. Whoa, dope. That's sick. I've looked into the surface. Yeah, the surface is fun, dude. It's got a 5K display, bro. I swear to God, your charts are like, <laughs> dude, with the, with the Microsoft Surface Studio, dude, I literally feel like I'm actually in the, in the chart. Like this thing, dude, watch a commercial on this thing. It's so amazing, man. This thing is, this thing is truly an astonishing piece of equipment. And I like this because if I want to kind of like bring it down or raise it up, I just love it, dude. You can do so much with it. So I've had this for a couple of years, probably about two years. I got, I, dude, I got it like literally the week it came out. Um, yeah, and you can build a nice PC for 900 bucks, dude. I'm new, trying to learn how to short in the morning. Which strategy can I watch for or expect in this market? Um, right now, Ronnie, the number one thing that I would recommend, brother, is go to the trading, Joe Kelly Trading Basics um, series and definitely watch that. And not to, not to sell you guys at all, man, this, I'm just trying to help you guys say, but I, just for the guys that literally don't know, um, let me pull this up real quick. Um, just so you guys know, just so you're aware, if you do have this, this is the first way to start. This is the accelerator course guys. Um, if you're not familiar with this, this is an eight hour course designed to teach you everything. So, um, you know, uh, Ronnie, if you have questions about like how to start, man, I can promise you, bro, it's all in this course. If you have it, um, cause we're doing promotions right now where this is kind of like, um, we're giving a really good deal for bundle. Um, in fact, text me guys or DM me if you have any questions about our labor day sale ending Monday uh, night. But when it comes to the best way to start, if you have the accelerator course, please watch that first. 
if you don't have that uh, Joe Kelly trading basics. And then I'll just show you the easiest setup when it comes to, um, where's that? Was this it? Yeah, here we go. Uh, let's take a look. Guys, someone give me a chart that hit, that was super under VWAP recently and then like died off. Like, I know I post a lot of them, but does anybody have something that I can show as a really good, like my setup, my style? I'm sure, I'm sure you guys can come up with something. Let's see, I'm trying to think of what I nailed recently. Like, it's been so slow, but was it BVP? No, it wasn't BVPR, what was it? It was, shit, I'm trying to remember. Well, here's the thing, Ronnie, just again, when it comes to, when it comes to stocks, man, hit short the weakest stocks in the day. So I like the things opening up way, way, way under VWAP. And then when they push to VWAP as an outer line, maybe coupled with a whole and half dollar number, there's a lot of overhead. There's enough volume on the day where all that volume will come out on the drop. Dude, I love that stuff, man. And that's an account builder. So that's probably the first thing that I would focus on if I was a new short seller is, guys, where are the most broken stocks? Um, I, tra I traded NNBC today. Let's take a look. Uh, NNBC today, it hit my trade line. r, &R is good, but I feel sometimes that I cover too soon. Um, here's my chart. Any tip? Yes, yes. I have a wonderful tip for you, dude, on something like this. NNBC, nice. This was a low hanger from yesterday because it got pretty beat down from yesterday. So nice. I would have waited a little bit higher and I probably would have totally missed this trade because you totally top ticked it, brother. But here's what you can do on this sick fox is definitely cover. You got to pay yourself. But brother, check this out. Where are you covered? Cover 80% of your position, set a hard stop for break even or even into profit, walk away, dude. Look what would have happened if you would have walked away with 20% 20, 20 of your position. Huge, huge fun money. And it'll build the muscle of you holding for longer. Um, as day trading gets more competitive and everyone starts to learn the same stuff all the gurus teach, do you still, oh dude, yeah, 100,000%. This stuff will be around for hundreds of years. Why? Because we play emotion. Dude, these things write you a love letter. This is not just patterns. This is like, dude, th th this is a love letter to shorts, man. This is like, you can hear the crying of longs in this candle, this drop under view up, this pop fail, this pop fail, the break of volume. This shit ain't gonna change. The reason why things like OTC are dead because these things were fucking scam companies in the beginning, as scam as you can get. I mean, dude, watch movies like The Boiler Room. Watch things like, you know, the Wolf of Wall Street. There's a reason why they shut down something like OTCs, but this stuff will be around, man. Um, short squeeze, yeah, short squeeze the energy bill. Alex causing, <laughs> Alex is causing rainstorms and power outages in New Jersey just with that freaking specs alone. Uh, thanks for spending the time. Of course, dude, got a Mac. My thought of joining monitors too, it makes me want to cry. Yeah, dude, get a PC, brother. Um, any real trader, any guy that's, or I'll say a veteran or a professional trader that does this for a living, it's all PCs, man. So definitely make the switch, Sonny. I would say if you want to do this for the long haul, um, you can use parallels and things like that, but it's just, it's kind of a nightmare. Um, yeah, I imagine a flex grid on TOS would be awesome. On the, <laughs> yeah, it is, man. It's fun. You can also do a small form factor. Yep. Cool. I don't know what that means, but cool. <laughs> that's where I'm not a tech guy. I looked at phase pin list and watched the accelerator. Very nice. Then that's the thing, man. Watch the accelerator again and then do that strategy that I said. Is the accelerator for beginners? It is, it is for everybody, brother. It is for everybody. It is for beginners. It is for advanced traders. It is for anybody of any level. It is in all inclusive of all of our teachings and what you can learn at MIC. Um, Microsoft Surface Studio 2 for Canadians. There you go. Uh, video library pathway. Check this out. So, if you're brand new, orientation video. If you have Jumpstart, go to the Jumpstart, Trading Fish Academy, then here. Uh, if you have the orientation video, which you watch first and you don't have the Jumpstart Accelerator, which I recommend you do guys, and we're having serious promotions on all of our packages right now, but except for the, the, except, the exception is the single month. We don't discount the single month. We just did that and that was a one-off for the year for our anniversary. But if you do wanna come in at very discounted rates on the other packages, we will get that for you. Uh, do some coupling bundle factors with the jumpstart and things like that. But orientation, trading basics with Joe, MIC strategy category, setting up lines, trading fish, and then get into it, everything else, chat room, uh, you know, back testing all of the good stuff. But there's your roadmap. That's a roadmap for you. Yes, yes, watch it again, brother, watch it again. If you have questions, watch it again. Um, Neo, what's Neo doing? 
Wow. Wow. Serious tank. Was there news? What is this? What's going on? Overall market sell-off, continuation of weakness following August delivery numbers. Ah, wow. Yeah. That's some bleed, man. But check that out. Look at that, man. Wow. All the volume came in in reverse right there. I don't like Neo. I'm not a fan. I never was, but yep. Uh, a struggle I have is going long at support. I have a fear of the rug being pulled out because of all the crazy stuff I've seen. Gil, take a number, brother. Why do you think I'm a short seller? <laughs> Check NVV and NVC. Um, do massive shorts hammering in create the first massive drop or uh, first or longs? I mean, it's a combination of everything, man, but it's mostly hidden sellers in my opinion. Um, I, when when people are unloading, that it's it's a sell-off, man. It's not like, oh, a bunch of shorts just piled it down. In my, That's what keeps it going down and then the sell-off and then it's just like a domino effect. But dude, in my opinion, man, when something really does a death candle because it's been up all day or whatever, the, long, the longs are just like, dude, I'm out this bitch. And there's a huge hidden seller. And then it causes a cascading motion of everyone. Like I showed you in the wicks, it's just panic. And everybody's like, Oh shit, I got in. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Uh, thank you. 80, 20 tip noted. Yeah. Leave a piece on man. 25%, 20%, maybe even 10% just to start, get a feel for it, build your muscle on holding for a winner longer. Um, it, dude, it, it's going to build that muscle. Even if it's 1%, you're going to, cause you're going to know what it feels like of I got in this stock. I covered most of it, but Hey, I'm still fucking in. I'm still in the stock. IGC seems slow today. Was hoping. For, yeah, dude, seriously. It was like, I don't like this spotty shit, man. Um, this was my first webinar. I appreciate it so much, Tosh. It's unreal how you respond to everyone. Hey, happy to help, man. Seriously. Thanks for being a part of MIC, man. We're here to help. We are, yeah, like Alex just said, guys, we are running a Labor Day special. It ends Monday at night. And then, guys, we're probably not going to do uh, any major promotions uh, for a while after that. So this really is the time to get some discounted rates. I, I, I promise you guys, if, if you are on the fence, if you want access to a couple things, whether it's annual, whether it's bundle, um, you guys literally, this is all members. So I'd say text my line, but you guys can literally just DM me, um, you know, direct message me and we'll get in a, you know, I'll get on the phone with you if you need, talk around your options. But I'm telling you right now, guys, if there was a time to upgrade or get access to the accelerator, you have until Monday where we got some pretty good deals on it. I'm telling you. Um, do, do, do. I knew a big fat zero before watching the accelerator. Now that I watched, at least I understand the language. Ronnie, um, I love that man. And, and dude, the elimination of ego, bro, is really going to help you. Um, that's good, man. That's good that you knew you knew zero before. Like, dude, coming in with an ego and a trading is like the number one way to fail. So now brother, just watch it again, watch chat every day, you know, watch the trading fish Academy and then, you know, back test on a simulator and dude, you're, you're going to really understand this language, man. This really, really comes in time, but it comes quickly here. here here's how I can say it. It comes dude. It comes in time but you can just exponentially understand this game and what we do. If you have the accelerator, you have access to the mods, you're hitting up James, you know, I'll just give you guys an example. If you guys upgraded to lifetime today, instantaneously, you're going to get an hour coaching session with Joe Kelly. This is more of a general webinar than what I'm doing with you guys in screen sharing. But dude, Joe is literally going to do a screen share with you personally for an hour. He's going to help you out. He's just going to overhaul your trading. You're going to have the chance to, to actually trade live with um, Tom Diesel and James Freelander. Get on the phone with him if you're a lifetime member and he's going to help you out, man. So again, these are, th these are just huge resources that if you guys are not, you know, taking advantage of, or you're on the fence, man, I'm telling you, you guys are going to get this in time, but I'm telling you right now, annual and lifetime members are going to get it way quicker than monthly members, just for the access of the content, for the focus, um, you know, annual and lifetime probably have three to four times the content and about 10 times the structure. So any package is good at MIC, but you're going to cut your learning curve by probably hundreds of percent, bro. Uh, I love MIC. I did the boot camp and I went from annual to lifetime. So much information. Now I don't feel rushed in learning. It's all about honing. Dude, nailed it. Daryl, nailed it, bro. Now it's just about sharpening the sword. You have all the resources you need. Now you put in time and you go, dude, if I trade well, profits will follow. How can I trade well? By showing up every day and learning. Uh, can only agree with you. Texted Tosh on the phone, got answers ridiculously fast. Hey, thanks, brother.
Um, and it was me. It's not a robot, huh? Um, if you trade a minimum of 100K volume, how do you manage not getting stopped out in massive spikes on low volume or the spread between the price? Well, I'm not hitting, stay. I'm not hitting things with massive spreads. Let me make that very clear. I don't like stocks with 30 cent spreads. I like a very tight spread, but when you do, you know, when you wait for the outer lines, you're waiting for the squeezes to happen already. That's the whole point. So again, guys, like I'll just give you an example. Um, let's go back to DPW real quick. Uh, three things I look for on any given day of the stock, any given day. Let's draw them out. Outer lines. I'm waiting for the massive tank to hit bounces. Usually the bounce are a little bit higher. So we'll say that that's the bounce and I'll draw them out. And, or if none of these come, I'm waiting for a massive squeeze, up, squeeze upward to short layer once a top is set. So I, I'll literally just draw it out. So like say this was the top, right? Here's the bounce. So check this guys, check this. Three scenarios in any trade I look for in the morning. Outer lines, the bounce, ideally a higher bounce than what it did. That wasn't really a bounce. Too short for lower, or I'm waiting to squeeze out all the amateur shorts and then I'm waiting for the top and then hitting the bounce. Three scenarios, screenshot that right now. That's all there is that I ever look for. It cannot get more simpler. Dude, trading is not, it, it's so simple, man. It's so simplified. It can, be, it can be broken down into a fucking formula like A plus B equals C. Stop fighting trend. Wait for your confirms. If you find yourself getting squeezed out all the time, guess what? You're not patient. You got FOMO. Make sense? Uh, here, I'll even draw it out right here. I would have hoped for a bounce to here. There's my three scenarios. How can you improve my ex execution speed? Um, Eamon, get DOS Trader, get a professional platform. Platform makes all the difference in the world. Um, and then it's just about screen time, brother, you, with limits and getting good at that. But I was slow as shit in the beginning. And now I'm, I can trade five stocks at one time using all limit orders and putting hard stops and get them out just because you, you do it for so long, you just get good. What's your cover strategy, line to line or hold for the all day fader? Ervin, I used to always hold for the all day fader. Now I never do, dude. I really never do. I just, I used to get a lot of um, doubles and triples and home runs, but with doubles and triples and home runs comes giving all your gains back a lot of time. Dude, you could be up $2,000 on a day. You hold all day. Now you're down 2000 because it ripped a high a day. Bro, base hits every single day. Alex has truly, truly, truly turned me into an only a base hit hunter with the occasional home run because you get lucky. Um, and then second, um, a, a cutoff at 1030. Dude, Alex completely converted me, man. I used to hold for a lot of all-day faders. The only exception I will with an all-day fader, here's the only exception now. I get in here, outer line, I get in here, I get in here, one of my, de one of my desired entries. I cover, say, at VWAP or on a nice wash. I hold 10 or 20% for much lower with a hard stop at break even. That's the only exception now. I am never holding 100% for an all-day fader because I don't want to give back my gains, man. If you get to the point where you realize how much process and base hits will pay you, you will never go back to all-day faders, ever. Dude, base hits win the baseball game, man. <laughs> you don't need a team of Barry Bonds, dude. You just need a team of fucking... Whoever's hit, whoever's got the, you know, the best batting average to hit base hits, bro. Just get on base, get on base, get on base, get on base, get on base. And then you will bring everybody home. Alex truly taught me this through our two years together uh, through MIC and talking every day as town partners with Val. I have truly learned that finally. So I pike all the time, brother. And guess what? I don't care. Uh, forget the all day faders. Exactly. Wow. No hotkeys, all manual entries, brother. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I'll slam a market order. It's, it's more rare market orders. I'll just bail with a market order sometimes, or if I didn't have a hard stop, which I always have hard stops on, but 90% are limit orders. Yes, man. Just take the predictable moves, but still, um, debate it in turn. Oh, dude, of course. I mean, Aravin, here's the thing. So I shorted Tesla on this day. Um, I shorted right here at VWAP. So just this general area, right? Well, I can't remember the exact numbers. I covered right here. 
I wanted to fucking jump off a bridge, dude. Are you kidding? I left fifty dollars on the table, bro. Fifty points on the position on the table, and guess what? Time goes on. Life goes on, brother. I had a win. I had a base hit. Did I miss a grand slam? Yeah, but what are you gonna do, man? I didn't realize it would literally give back this much. I just thought I'd get a nice scalp out of it, honestly. <laughs> Alex tabbed me, bro. Love this webinar. Can't wait to rewatch. Hey, happy you like it, man. I'm, I'm glad I pushed the record button pretty early into it. Uh, hopefully you guys get something out of this. Couple more minutes, guys. Couple more questions. Man, I'm feeling like, I feel like I just ran 10 miles talking so much. <laughs> but see, this is the thing, man. Again, like if there's a slow market, if there's a slow day, uh, you know, we, we want to make sure you guys are up to date. We want to make sure you guys get your questions answered. And we know there's a lot of guys out there that are a little bit shy when it comes to answering or asking questions and that's okay. So, you know, we'll do these, we'll record them and hopefully, you know, everybody gets up to speed. Um, not everybody's, you know, wants to be in the limelight. Not everybody wants to ask questions. That's fine. We're not going to pressure you. We hope you do, but we're not going to pressure. Uh, what are we watching right now? What's the main thing you guys are looking at right now? Are you guys looking? I, dude, I didn't pay attention to small caps at all. What's Spy doing? Yeah, QQQ. Ah, go go. That's right. I remember. Oh yeah, dude, not my style. I wasn't shorting this at all. I know Bal was able to channel trade this, and he's really good at that. But just not my niche, man. Seriously. Um, this is all I do during things like this. I just go like this. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> that ain't a broken trend. A broken trend would be like this. <laughs> broken trend would be like that <laughs> got a roll toss thanks hey see you tom enjoy your weekends guys three-day weekends man this is the perfect time to relax i am channeling nclh from vwap if you like about it nice nice i didn't even i didn't even what is this uh nclh didn't even see this one <laughs> yeah that's definitely what about does can you talk about market cycles if how it affects small caps in these strategies so the way it affects the strategy, Ske, is you will have um, a period of time where shorts are in control and the vice versa. So this is why MIC is such a wonderful experience of having traders of both, both sides and both levels is because here's the thing. When you have a bunch of long traders, a lot of our members on the short side are going to be frustrated for a week or two weeks, maybe even a month. But guess what? There's still plays. There's still nail and bell scalps. You just know that it's going to be a lot easier when, the sh when it decides to all tank because, dude, small cap land really comes in waves, man. And sometimes there's just a tsunami of like everything fades for weeks and everything squeezes for weeks. Right now, we're actually technically still in, in my opinion, in a, in a short market, but things like NCAC are actually finally rearing their ugly heads. Or what was that stock? I'm sorry. Um, guys, what was that one that was a major runner for the last couple of days? Not NCAC. Um, what's that fucking stock? I can never remember tickers, dude. I swear to God. Especially ones I don't really trade. You guys got, um, not NNB. Oh, K, KCNC. Sorry. K and <laughs> KNC. Wait, no, no. Fuck. Shit. <laughs> what was it? KCAC. There we go, man. <laughs> yeah. See how it's finally breaking trend right now. But here's the thing, guys you might get a solid week or a month where it's do everything is doing this and they're not breaking down. That would not be a, sh a favorable shorts market. This would be squeezers. Longs are going to basically buy now and ask questions later, right? Like we enter markets like that. So right now um, we are starting to see these, um, you know, rear their ugly heads, but well, just short sellers, I'm sure longs are getting super excited. I pray to God because it has been so dead. Here's the point though. When you have a market that is all short bias and everything fades for weeks, a lot of shorts are going to be happy, but guess what a lot of veteran shorts are actually not going to be happy about? When we don't have a random squeezer like this for a while, guys, the market goes dead because everybody just goes, well, fuck it. All, I can't long this, dude. I'm Robin Hood. Everything's just failing. Everything's, everything's going away. So if you have a small cap market where everything fades for weeks and weeks at a time, eventually it goes to standstill, dude. And that's what we're in right now until until these come back. So KCAC, uh, what was the other one? Go, go, um, BVP, dude, I, I thank God for these, man. Just keep going, keep going. Let this market squeeze so we can put a fire under small caps again. And that's why it's cyclical or whatever that word, you know, whatever that term is, it comes in waves. 
Uh, could you define your lines to scale the death candle on PLM? Well, let's see if PLM is even. Um, yeah, well, I mean, you know, I, I, I don't consider these death candles. I mean, they're similar. And yeah, if this would have popped up, I could have gotten a nice nail and bill out of this, but I don't like these to scale up to this level. So if this were to do as big a candle as this, but through VWAP, like say it went down to here and there's the death candle right there, then I'm going to wait for a pop up to the 40% level. And then I would scale 40% up to the high of day. Oh, I'm sorry, the high of the death candle. So that's how I scale death candles. But there's no death candle yet. That's just a massive stuff, which I don't, I don't like those or give those as much weight as I do a nice death candle. Nice waterfall candle, man, it's usually the signal at the end. This could be, you know, sometimes these break through. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, here's the thing. So usually the ones that I really like are, let's see what 40% looks like, a slam through VWAP and then a pop back up to VWAP would be about the 40% level. Then I'm, I'm getting in here and then I'm scaling with a risk at the top of the death candle. See how that kind of coincides? I will get the 40% jump of the death candle from zero to 100. If you have to, for the love of God, man, draw a Fibonacci retracement and see, oh shit, I don't know. Actually, fuck, how do you do it with, um, I, I know there's a way to do it. Is it regret, Fibonacci exit? No, it's not retracements, is it? I don't know. There's, there's a way to see like from 100% to 0% of something um, that's on a smaller scale. But here, yeah, well, that's what I thought it was, right? Oh, I think you have to, hold on. I might be doing it wrong. Do you have to like do it from the bottom? Ah, fuck it. I don't know. I'm not that well versed in that stuff because I never use it. But here's the thing, guys. VWAP would be about 40%. Make sense? So that would be where I start the scale, 40%, because they don't usually make it to the highs. So they usually make it up to 60, 75%. Boom, can get some nice scales with a stop right there at the top of the death candle. And that's my true risk. Yep. That's how I do that. That's my personal use. You know, that's what's worked for me for years. And when it comes to death candles, I want the biggest candle of the day. I want the most volume coming out of it. I don't even want to, I don't even want to guess it. If it ain't the biggest candle of the day, I don't want it. If it isn't slamming through VWAP, I really don't want it. This is not a death candle. This is not a death candle. This is not a death candle, nor is that nothing. You need this, but you need it to be solid like this. You have the candle solid. This is just a wick. I need this solid. All right, guys, how about, how about one more question? Does, does anybody have one last question before I wrap up? One last question. <laughs> Weekend plans. Smoke cigars with my best friend, talk real estate, Look for real estate <laughs> um, uh, on the weekends, man. My, my focus goes um, outside of me watching charts to more so just helping members for MIC and uh, side projects and what I can find elsewhere in different niches. So education, man, read some books, smoke some cigars, maybe take a dip in the pool, things like that. Hey guys, yeah, seriously, man. This is good. Dude, this is a three-day weekend, guys. Have a great have a great Labor Day, man. Spend some time with your families, guys. Don't just inundate all the time on charts. Really take some time with the family and the people that love you. Because, uh, man, I do. we could get so wrapped up in this our whole lives, man. But, hey, thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. I just wanted to kind of check in and make sure you guys are on top of your stuff. Use this time to study up, but um, definitely also take some time, you know, to yourself and to the family. But, you know, I mean, don't let the whole weekend go by without watching charts. <laughs> you know what? Just because Labor Day is Monday and, it, and the market's closed doesn't mean you can't treat that like a work day. So maybe take the weekend to chill and then Monday hit, the, hit that video library, man. And uh, if anybody is interested in the Labor Day prices, guys, they're right here. So, uh, or my DMs are right here. So just hit, hit me up and uh, we'll see what we can do for you. Um, especially all of our new guys who want to take advantage and get the accelerator course. Yep. DM me. All right, guys. Enjoy your weekends.